thank you very much for the invitation to to present some of this work. Uh, I haven't been. I'm I'm like most of you guys. English is a second language for myself, so I haven't been speaking English much lately. So uh, my English might be a bit rusty at the onset. Uh, near the end, it should be better. Uh, so what I'll be presenting is. Uh, uh, series of study we've we've done on uh, obesity and and balance control. Uh, this work uh, has been we started some of this work uh, nearly uh, uh, 15 years ago. So some of it some of it is a bit older, but uh, some of the work is is recent. Uh, a lot of folks uh, over the years have been. Uh, working on on these projects, I won't name all of them, but uh, mostly uh, Martin Simoneau, who's uh, who is a colleague now, and Angelo Tremblay, who's uh, also a colleague, have been uh, participating to to most of these uh, these studies. I'll try to convince you that uh, obesity uh, uh, perturbs balance control, and I'll try to. Uh, uh, by the end to present two hypotheses for explaining uh, why this is the case. Uh, <clears throat> mostly uh, an hypothesis uh, about the uh, uh, sensory uh, aspect, so uh, decreased mechanoreceptor sensitivity with obesity, and one other, another hypothesis which is more at the output uh, which is related to an, an increased output variability associated with obesity. So in between, we'll go through uh, a series of, of studies showing that uh, balance control is affected in obesity. But first, uh, just a few definitions, really uh, something really simple, uh, just so that uh, we, we speak the same language. Uh, <coughs> about uh, BMI and obesity, so, so healthy, healthy weight individual is a BMI between 19 and, and 25 kilogram per meter square. BMI is simply the mass of an individual divided by uh, the height squared. Overweight individuals are between a BMI between 25 and 30. Obese individuals are a BMI over 30, and morbidly obese individuals is a BMI uh, greater than 40 kilogram per meter square. Morbid obesity is basically defined as when uh, the overweight interferes with uh, basic physiological functions like breathing and fundamental motor activities like gait. Uh, it's generally about uh, 40 kilogram above uh, a healthy weight, but sometimes it's a little, little more. Uh, in the US and most uh, Occidental countries, there are about 30% of the individuals which are obese, uh, and about 8 million are morbidly obese. So the province I am in, in Canada, Quebec, is about 8 million people, so it's about if everybody in the province was, uh, was morbidly obese. Uh, on a yearly basis, uh, there are about, there are still about 200,000 bariatric surgeries that are performed in the U.S. Uh, the number continue to increase. Uh, those are recent uh, numbers uh, from Storm and Hattori from 2001 to 2010. Uh, and you see that uh, I have BMI, uh, they, they present BMI uh, over greater than, than 30, BMI greater than 40, so that those are morbid obese, and even BMI greater than 50 those are extremely obese individuals and basically you see that the, the, the increase is about nearly 100% uh, over uh, a 10-year period. It's not different in Canada. I took, I took these numbers in the, from the US because they're easier to find out. 
but uh, in Canada we uh, we basically whoops sorry we basically talk about uh, an uh, epidemic as well so why should we document balance control in these uh, individuals well first uh, a stable platform is the basis for most of our wow this is going too fast okay a stable platform is the basis for uh, most of our daily movements for instance uh, uh, we uh, we manipulate objects from an upright position the physical therapist will perform some maneuvers from from an upright position uh, and this uh, stable platform is the basis for for precise movements uh, second falling which is a direct consequence of a decreased balance control is one of the most important causes of work-related injuries. Uh, if I have some time at the end, I'll present some epidemiological work uh, showing that, but uh, the chances of suffering from a fall-related injury uh, requiring uh, medical hospitalizations are 15% to nearly 80% higher for overweight individuals. So there's clearly a link between obesity and work-related injuries. So, are obese individuals less stable or, or do they oscillate more than, than healthy weight is the topic I'll, I'll present uh, next. How do we uh, measure balance control? Uh, basically, using a force plate. Uh, we record forces and calculate the displacement of the center of foot pressure. Then various measures are extracted from this signal. Uh, I won't get over all of them. Uh, there, there, there are some debates as to which one is the best to, uh, to uh, document uh, balance control. Uh, some people use a uh, more uh, dynamical system approach, uh, use uh, like reference quantification analysis, stabilogram diffusion analysis. Uh, we've, we've tried all of these measures. It's a matter of uh, which approach you want to, to use to, uh, to document uh, balance control. Uh, for sake of simplicity, I'll simply, uh, I'll mostly present data for average speed in this presentation. Uh, average speed of the postural oscillations, which is an indicator of the overall postural activity uh, needed to maintain balance. It's simply the sum of the, the displacements over a given period of time. Uh, we've also, like I said, we've also looked at uh, other measures and I believe I have one slide where I'll present some uh, sway density analyses which are, uh, uh, which is a technique that uh, Piero Morasso uh, developed a few years back and which I uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, enjoy, but it's more uh, sometimes more complex to uh, to explain what it represents. Uh, we first, like I said, we we started this work about uh, 15 years ago, and our initial work was actually a simple uh, model to to analyze the effect of obesity on postural control. Uh, the model. Uh, we adopted was really, I think there's a delay, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the modeling we, uh, we used was uh, actually uh, simply uh, uh, a typical 15 segment anthropometric model of the body and we uh, model a normal weight individual and an obese individual, actually a morbidly uh, obese individuals. Uh, the, those, those are actually the anthropometric uh, data for, for these two individuals. Uh, they were the same height, but the body mass of the obese uh, was uh, 140 kilograms compared to 80 kilograms for the uh, control subject, and with a body mass index of nearly uh, 43 kilograms per meter square. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So this was the actual individual. 
As you see, the mass is not equally distributed uh, around the midline of the subjects. Uh, for simplicity, we, uh, I'll present data where, where the mass is actually uh, equally distributed, but we also did some simulation and modeling when the mass is actually uh, displaced forward to the, uh, the center line, the midline. Uh, and those actually are the model. You see the, uh, the uh, morbid individual or the obese individual and the normal weight individual. The model, as I said, is a simple inverted, a classical inverted pendulum where we measure torque at the ankle uh, following a postural uh, oscillation. So the whole idea is uh, we pushed that model forward and we look at how much torque is necessary to stabilize the body uh, after uh, a, a given delay and uh, whether the, the model actually stabilizes itself uh, depending on the torque magnitude and the rate of torque that was uh, produced. So if I go back on this idea when we when we uh, oscillate normally if for instance if i uh, move forward uh, if i do nothing i'll fall though so to to stabilize my body i need to produce a torque i need to control the time before actuating this torque uh, this is somehow a reaction time or a torque onset if i wait too long then it will be too late and I'll, I'll be falling. And the torque I produce needs to be uh, of a given magnitude and produce within a given period of time. So I need to control the rate of change of the torque I'm producing as well. Uh, to illustrate that, uh, this is an example of different uh, torque time curves uh, that are produced in a in uh, some uh, rate of torque, different rate of torque, and with uh, they are all 40 newton meters. So in this particular case, uh, the torque onset is 100 millisecond, and all curves are 40 newton meters. But some of them are produced in 100 millisecond, and some of them are produced in 600 up to 600 milliseconds. So it's a family of uh, torque time curves that can stabilize my body when I oscillate forward, but they may not uh, stabilize uh, my body all the time. So this is what we've been uh, looking at. So the input of the actual uh, model in this particular case was the, uh, the perturbation, which was 2.5 too fast, 2.5 centimeter per second. So that's a normal forward oscillation. So the model, we simply applied a 2.5 centimeter per second perturbation and moving it forward. We had a delay in the onset of the torque response. So 100 to 350 millisecond before we applied, we started to apply the uh, torque response to stabilize the body. We varied the amplitude of the torque response, which was could be from 1 to 200 Newton meters. And we varied as well the rate of torque of the, uh, the rate of torque of the, the stabilizing response by uh, reaching the torque in 50 to 600 milliseconds. Are these value? Whoop, this one is not really too good. Uh, those, those are data from, from Daryl Talon uh, a few years back, simply showing uh, that uh, for young and elderly, male and female, these values of torque magnitude and rate of torque are, are biological. Uh, in this particular case, uh, these data simply showed that uh, these individuals were producing uh, torque of 20, 40, and 60 Newton meters uh, in about 
200 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. So the values we entered in the uh, in our model were simply a little stretch uh, around these uh, these values. And the output of the model is quite simple. It's uh, it's stability or loss of stability. So we apply the response and we simply look if this was sufficient to stabilize the uh, the model or if it wasn't sufficient to stabilize the model. Uh, those are videos. I don't think they work, so I won't click. So I'll be sure they won't, uh, they won't perturb anything. But uh, the video was simply showing an actual uh, model moving forward uh, following the oscillations. And with the, uh, the uh, torque that was uh, started to to enter to counteract the forward oscillations and this one was uh, stabilized the, the model was stabilizing itself and the next one actually the model wasn't stabilizing and kept moving forward until a fall this is basically the uh, the main results i'll walk you through through these slides basically what i present is uh, our planes of stability for the uh, normal model here and the obese model here. Uh, what I have is the torque onset here, the time to peak torque, and the muscular torque that was produced. So a torque, all torque values below this plane of stability are actually uh, insufficient to stabilize the model and everything uh, within this plane or above uh, was sufficient to uh, stabilize the model. So in this in this case, what 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 it means if we look at the uh, torque onset here, the torque onset uh, was uh, 100 millisecond. The time to peak torque was 50 millisecond for this point here, and the torque magnitude necessary to stabilize the model was 20 newton meters. So what we see when we compare the uh, the normal uh, model with the obese model is that uh, the torque values to stabilize the body are much higher. higher and as we move uh, uh, toward the uh, torque onset or the time to peak torque uh, axis, we see that the, uh, the torque uh, required to stabilize the body increases uh, much more for the obese humanoid. Uh, in this actual figure, I have also this area which I want to show, which is basically when you too fast or it's moving by itself. Uh, basically what it shows uh, is that if you wait too long, uh, there, there aren't any uh, torque values that are capable of stabilizing uh, the body. If I take these two white lines here, I'll simplify this stability plane and present only values when the time to peak torque is constant or the rate of, of uh, torque is constant and I vary the torque onset. So in this particular case on the uh, left panel the uh, time to peak torque is constant at 200 millisecond and I vary the torque onset from 100 millisecond to 300 millisecond and what we see is that as we